Hi there. So today I bring you a Voigtlander, Voigtlander Vitesse T. I already had made a video about this camera, but um, like I told you previously, from now on, every time that I do a video on a compact camera, I will um, shoot a roll of film with it so that we all have a better knowledge of what I say and also the experience of shooting uh, on the street with the camera and this is what I, I, I did with this so uh, the other existing video about the Vitesse T will be deleted and uh, this will be the sole video that I uh, will have on the Voigtlander Vitesse T. The Vitesse is a very well known model the first generation did not have interchangeable lenses like this one uh, it was very cute with the band door system to close the lens it was a bellows the camera with bellows this one is almost the same, same body, same high quality. It's a rangefinder, if you don't know, there's a rangefinder. It has a built-in selenium meter that still works, although it is limited to 200 ASA. And it, I really like the design, besides the high quality of the camera. Everything that you see shining is a beautiful and lovely anodizing uh, that is second to none, including Leica, probably much better than the anodizing used for the M6, for instance. This is real leather, so the camera really oozes quality and class uh, in every corner. As you may have noticed, most of the controls are at the bottom. Rewind, crank, this is to open the back, this is to rewind the film, this is just to balance the camera. This is the tri tripod push. Because this camera doesn't have an advanced lever, it has the famous prong. And this prong has two functions. One is to advance the film, of course, when you take the picture. And uh, the other is to lock the shutter button when the prong is in the down, downward position. Now I can shoot. The camera is equipped with the Compur Synchro shutter, leaf shutter, so it is quiet. This system is very reliable. Uh, I mean, uh, the framing or the space between the frames are, are really even, so it works very well. Like uh, a good friend of mine here on the internet would say, would like me to say, and I will say it, it works a treat. Um, so, the prong is not as disgraceful as you might think. Actually, I quite enjoyed using it, because uh, uh, when I took the picture, immediately I would rewind it, uh, wind it, and so the camera was ready, because I knew that um, it made sense. What doesn't make sense, and I, I really don't, I don't understand on the camera, is when the prong uh, stays down. I think it has a mind of, of its own, so I really don't understand. It stays down only when it wants. So I have no idea why it stays down sometimes and why it stays up. So I work with the Vitesse with the prong most of the time up. This is the shutter button, as you may have seen. And, sorry, um, this is what I don't like. You see the meter here, which is, a, which is great. It's very limited because it works, but it uh, only accepts 200 as a film and uh, as a film, and I shot 400. So I used my what I call Paolo Matic. This is my my eyes to as a meter, and I wasn't that far off. In all due modesty, now. Uh, the system has, a, 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 for each sensitivity, film sensitivity, there is a letter A, B, C, D, E and F. And then you search for the letter and you have a different scale of numbers that you look for them here, the E, V values. Trouble is, this is loose, so uh, it's, there, are, there are no clicks, it's not lockable. lockable so. If, even if I had used this, I would have constantly to search for the scale because it would have moved out of place. Also, it's very tiny. You can hardly see anything, especially when it, 
outside by the sun, strong sun, it's, it's, it's not really easy to read. Another thing that uh, I really do not like about the Vitesse T is the viewfinder. Uh, not the viewfinder itself, it's because it is small. It has automatic parallax correction, but there is a huge difference between what we see and what the camera actually sees. And of course, all, there always is because this is a compact, so uh, this is not an SLR. But um, doing very precise compositions <coughs> or framings uh, is a bit pointless because I've noticed that there is a, a significant difference be in, uh, uh, between what we actually see on the viewfinder and what, what we actually get on film. So, um, this is one of the things that I notice. If you are planning to use the Vitesse T, you have been warned. And this, is not, this did not happen at close range. It happened uh, with four or five meters. So, um, I think the, the viewfinder is more imprecise than it, uh, it usually is the norm. Now, the camera is really... I really think it's fun to use. You can, after winding the film, you can, you know, uh, have fun with the prong as much as you want because it will not keep on advancing the film. It only advances the film once and then it locks the advance of the film so that you can have fun, okay? Um, what I really did not enjoy at all, at all, was loading the camera. And, um, I do admit that I don't speak uh, Voitlande Vitesse T fluently, so um, it was the second or third time that I used the camera, but I really had, uh, perhaps it was the, the, the film itself it didn't really lend to the camera. Um, there is no spool to speak of, so this is not a problem to um, search and find here um, sort of a lid for the tip of the film. This is okay. It's no, it's no problem here. It's no big deal. The problem is here. Um, the camera, but well, for some reason, has this pressure bar here. And uh, although it is chamfered so that it will not run into the film and lift it, I had exactly that problem with my film because um, the film uh, would lift, this would lift the film and would wrinkle it. Uh, so I spent, you know, long, a long time and uh, I had to be very patient to get the film <laughs> into this Vitesse. So I am sharing with you a, a problem that I had. It doesn't mean that you will have it as well, because you might be uh, better than me, possibly you will be better than me. If not, be warned that mm, that problem might occur. Once loaded, I also forgot that um, the frame counter is not auto zeroing. So, uh, well, it doesn't matter much for me because when the film is over, it's over. So, um, it really is um, pointless. Uh, I also don't use this to keep the information if it is uh, what sort of film it is inside, so it's not of a great use to me. And okay. And the results you can see at the end of the video. They, they were very nice. I think they were very nice. I'm sorry for you fans of macro photography, flowers and bouquet and stuff like that. I'm sorry, I don't do that. So I took it on the street with me. I shot a roll of black and white film from macro, 400 as a or Raleigh, as you wish. And I was pleased. The lens is really nice, very, very nice. It is a Tessa type of lens. But somehow I always found the, the, the scope bars on, on the 35mm cameras to be 
really uh, sharper. I don't know if sharper is the correct word, but um, more different, with a different character, more flattering than the Zeiss Tessar, which is basically the same lens. But hey, this, this, are, this is just my opinion, these are my thoughts. It might not be true to for uh, other people that might just say the opposite and so uh, this is the type of uh, the, the the photographs that this camera makes is the type of results that i like to have a final word to show you the bayonet mount of the vitessa this is not the kodak routine mount as it is widely uh, said on the internet, it is wrong, it has nothing to do with Kodak, and um, this bayonet is not interchangeable with the Vetlander SL, uh, SLR system, the Bessa Matic. It's only interchangeable, it's the same mount as the Brown Super Colorette, which is another rangefinder. So uh, I'm afraid that lenses for the Vitesse are limited, very limited. You only have the 35 millimeter. We have another one, another 50, uh, the Ultron 50 f2, and then we have the 90 uh, 3.4, I believe. You can search for lenses from Schneider and other manufacturers that were made for this camera as well, and the Brown Super Colorette. I really enjoyed taking pictures with the camera, especially because you have here the automatic um, depth of field indicators here, which is really, really uh, useful and nice. You see those two little red arrows. So the more I open the lens, the closer they get. So the lens is wide open, my depth of field or hyperfocal is really very narrow. If I open the lens, no, if I focus to, if I close down the lens, if I focus to three meters, then you see that between 1.5 and 20 meters will be sharp. This system was used in the 50s and 60s by Hasselblad, by Zeiss, uh, Carl Zeiss Siena also produced lenses like this. So it is very interesting and useful, I think. Well, my friends, um, I have nothing more to say about the uh, Voigtlander Vitesse T. Just wait for the end of the video to see a couple of pictures that I've taken with this camera. I hope I've enjoyed um, getting to know the Vitesse T and the photographs that I made with it. Thank you very much and hope to see you again in another video of mine.